When I first got to New York, we used to view Pharrell Sanders as like one of the last great innovators in the music. It seemed like I've known Pharrell forever. There's some people like that in your life, you know. He's a great, great musician. I was just trying to see if I could play a pretty note, <laughs> a pretty sound. I kept on trying to improve my sound and trying to perfect my sound. Unique is not even a strong enough word. It's like he's playing like pure light at you. It's way beyond the language, it's way beyond the emotion. It's like taking, taking fried chicken and, 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 and gravy to, to space and having a picnic on the moon and listening to Pharrell. When I try to play music, I'm telling the truth about myself. You hear Pharrell Sanders, you immediately are filled with joy. For Farrell, I think growing up in a place like Little Rock, Arkansas, where he already has experienced kind of like obscene racism in settings where he's trying to play music. At that time, jobs they would call me about, I had to play behind the curtains. I played uh, lots of jobs like that, you know, behind the curtain. I didn't, I didn't let that stop me. It was confusing to be black for a minute. You were told to sit down and make people dance. It's almost a polite way of saying, just keep skinning and grinning. Tone down your Africanness. And there's only a few in the industry who stayed and still have said their own word. Farrell's one of them. I was listening to blues, blues albums. My father had a collection. I never did go into his collection until he left home. At that time, I was listening to blues. I was listening to people like Nat King Cole, a little bit of Count Basie, definitely Duke Ellington. I learned a whole lot. I met John Handy, another great saxophonist. He had told me, your sound is not here. You need to go to New York so people can maybe listen to you and understand what you're doing. One time he told me, you sound like an organ on the horn. Well, a saxophone, you can express yourself more because it's a reed instrument. You can bend notes, you know, you can do so many things uh, with the mouthpiece and read. They influenced other people. When they left town, people liked to dress like Pharaoh. You leave Chicago, next thing you know, everybody's wearing what Pharaoh wore. When we were growing up, if we put on a fan and blow into the fan, you could sound just like Pharaoh. Wow. I mean, we kids, you know, <laughs> we, we don't know nothing. All we know, if you put a fan in front of the saxophone, it'll sound like Pharaoh. <laughs> Now, how he did that without a fan, we have no idea. Pharaoh's music is so powerful because his spiritual soul is powerful. It's almost like that music is, is bursting out of him. It's like he can't contain it, you know, and he has to play just for his own survival, <laughs> you know? Sound, for me, just completely engulfs you. The way that he would phrase and gave energy to the band. I always feel music is very, uh, you know, a spiritual kind of thing, you know. That's what I'm trying to put into my music. It's my language of trying to uh, speak out and, and uh, feed myself. He has a, a very special line to a spiritual pool that I don't think most people have, which makes sense as to why John Coltrane would want him to be by his side. I was, I was very nervous because uh, to play with John Coltrane, a uh, great, great musician like like that. He, I would play a short solo. He's, he would say, no, go on, keep on, keep on playing, you know? And I said, well, okay then. To me, that's what makes his music powerful. It's like he controls the, he controls the evening. He has a way of, of setting up a, a scenario sonically. And in that scenario, there's an introduction and it starts to bring you in. And then as it starts to bring you in, then all of these other variables occur and he takes you on a journey, you know, that you probably wouldn't have expect, expected to be on. And then when he's ready, then he releases you. I go see Farrell Sanders play at the Village Vanguard, plays this amazing set, and then at the end of the set, brings out his prayer bowl. At that moment, you realize you're not in a jazz club anymore, that you're in a spiritual space, and that you've all come there unknowingly to become a congregation. As pure, as his soul is, his music is just as powerful. I never look at the word jazz. I just play. 